Guys, welcome inside the MMA Junkie Radio Studios. Happy to have this come together. Uh, this is fun. John Morgan here, obviously over there, a man that means, needs no introduction whatsoever. MMA legend Diego Sanchez. Thank you, John. Happy to have you, sir. And the Swiss Army knife of mixed martial arts. That's what I like to call him now. Joshua Fabio, the uh, manager, trainer, nutritionist, physical therapist. I mean, what, what you do everything basically in this camp at this point, right? So, uh, guys, let's just get into it, man. We've kind of been talking a little bit uh, off air, but... I mean, you haven't had a very cordial welcome to MMA. We haven't been the most welcoming community to you. But at the same time, I've seen you guys out there doing every interview, staying in front of the public's eye, you know, being willing to address everything when you could easily just clam up and say, guys, it's none of your business. I'm going to go about it. So I want to ask either one of you. I mean, why is this a priority for you guys to, to make this choice to say, hey, we're, we're going to go out there and we're going to talk to everybody? Well, first of all, I just feel like we're the two small guys, you know, in, in a big MMA world doing a lot of things that haven't been done before or in the past. And so with this, it's just like, it's our duty as it is everyone else's duty to do the right thing and say the right thing. And if you're getting bullied into the a corner where they can manipulate you in any way that they want and you're you have fear of this bully who has power over you and and your ability to to just be and 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 do what you do so this is what has happened here we're just speaking up for ourselves like we want to lead that example to all the children out there who are bullied into a corner by the bully that's bigger and more powerful than them. This is what's happening here, and, and we're happy to speak on it. Well, I appreciate it, man. I, you know a lot of the criticism, obviously. You've been working together a little while, but the criticism really reached ahead after the Michelle Pajeda fight. Now, I've heard the corner talk and what the advice was, and I've, I've heard that ad nauseum. I think you guys have addressed that and say, listen, it's our code. It's what we're working on. Don't worry about that. The one thing I haven't heard is what the strategy was going in. Because I think that's what a lot of people are concerned about, fans, media like, is, hey, Joshua, you know, how savvy are you at creating game plans? You know, how much can you help Diego actually approach a fight? Now, I've told you guys before we got started, I thought the rolling thunder to start was brilliant. I mean, Michelle Pajeda, he moves wild. He's crazy. So I figure if you can come in and kind of shock and awe him a little bit, maybe it changes the rhythm up a little bit. I love that. I didn't understand quite as much the stance on the feet, the framing, the switching stances. I didn't know if that was I'm, – I'm presuming it was to keep distance, but I, I don't know that for sure, especially with it being a bigger guy. I don't even know if that would be effective because he does have more reach. He could, I would think, punch past that. So I just want to give you guys a moment, and again, whoever feels more comfortable, what was the strategy in that fight? I know it didn't go your way, but what was the plan in, in taking down Michelle Pajeda? Before addressing strategy and our strategy, you have to think of what is the opponent that is in front of you. And so the, 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 the people, the masses, they believe what they have been, what they've seen and what they've been told. And so they see the fight with him and Tristan Colony. And they see a, a flashy fighter who's very talented and has extreme explosive abilities to do things that other athletes and mixed martial arts and men in general do not have this is a this is an anomaly that I, I was facing here they like to see him lose to the little small white guy my homie Tristan Colony who when he really did screw up on the weight cut screwed up on on his his what he did to go out there and perform on that night well and hold on if you have planned your whole camp for a certain fighter and a stand-in comes in five days out. Are you really giving it the same fight you're preparing for Diego motherfucking Nightmare Sanchez? Like, let's just get some shit straight. I mean, did it look like Pieta's cardio was going down? Did it look like the elevation was affecting him? See, this is, this is the dumb shit is you, everybody want to compare one thing to another thing. They're not comparable. Their experiences, their moments in time. And the narrative then being sold is, Diego should easily be able to take this guy down. Easily. You know, the guy that has the most dangerous fucking flying knees in the game. And nobody wants uh, poor Diego to end up like poor Askren. But, you know, Cormier's saying, get in on those legs. I dare you to come in on those legs, bro. 
I dare you. But that's, that's interesting that you want to tell this man to go do it when his life is on the line. And he took the knee and look what happened. But when he was doing what he was told by his coach, he didn't take the knee. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Well, that kind of gets me to another point then, and I think it'll factor into this because I've heard you point out multiple times the defense, the improved defense. Listen, Diego is not getting hit. And you know we love you for the wars that you put on, but we also know it's not good for the human body either. You can only do it for so long, mm -hmm. right? So I would you agree could with take, that. You could take so much. Right. You could take so much. And that's, in, that's not only in the fight. That's in training. Absolutely. And, and these impacts that affect the human body, the brain, the mind, the, the being in total, the, they have to be addressed. And, and this is where you have these problems with these fighters nowadays who aren't addressing any of, the, any of these issues and just throwing them in, throwing them in the bottom drawer of, 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 of shit they got to deal with. Then they're 50, then they're 60. Now you're dealing with this shit. And is anyone going to take responsibility or any type of liability for the aftermath and wake of the effects of those adults that have been traumatized by the octagon and are now in the regular world and who knows what happens right is anybody taking any responsibility for that is anybody put any money aside for those those athletes no so we're talking all this shit about cte but it but if you really cared is this how it would be so again coming from the outside I love the fact that you're an analyst. I love the fact that you said some things, but I need to point out to you that you're an expert and you didn't point out the fact that it's kind of fucking amazing that Diego Sanchez, 16 years in the UFC, been pretty much the Rocky Marciano of the sport. He's moving. He can change stance. He went from being a Southpaw to this. How come are you not putting the emphasis on a 38 year old man in less than a fucking year, changed his style, and one guy did it, not a team of six guys. How come nobody's saying anything positive like that? You see it, but you're not giving credit to the professional who has done something remarkable. Remarkable. No love, no credit, because we didn't see the blood and the guts, man. And, and we didn't like the way that your trainer had your stance. Well, let me say this, though. But I, it's, I wouldn't say the blood and the guts. I understand what you're saying. You're right. Maybe you don't get enough love for what you've accomplished in that respect. But here's my concern is that you're absolutely right in terms of longevity, self-preservation. That stuff is all incredibly important. Unfortunately, in Diego's chosen profession of cage fighting, you do have to have some offense as well. I mean, you do have to engage. You can't – there is no scoring criteria that will reward you for defense. I mean, life preservation, absolutely – but and, not winning. So what, what's, what, what, what real, about the offensive real, real quick, didn't you just mention how he started out offensive? He that, started out on the attack. Absolutely. Felt out the opponent immediately and realized this takedown ain't happening and got his space and distance. So was that not the offense, this, this original new offense? Let me ask you a question. You think you could pull off Rolling Thunder because you saw it on fucking YouTube? Absolutely not. Okay, so, so let's ask Diego. <laughs> let's ask Diego now that the experts know so much. Diego. How many fucking rolls do you do every day in training, warm up before ever getting started? One hundred every day. Might be interesting, we're, we're Joe. In the, we're in the thousands. Might now. be interesting, Joe Rogan talking that shit about me saying one hundred, one hundred. Maybe you should ask me what the fuck it means, asshole. Maybe you should actually have a conversation with somebody before you slander them on national television on a fucking broadcast like you know what you're doing. All right. So what was the plan? Let's go back to the original question. Then what yeah. was the game like? Tell me what what. Had it worked, whether it had been standing, whether it had been what well, was the game ahead. plan? First of all, the game plan was for me to get in the space where I can execute the kill. All right? The kill zone. Get to the kill zone. Get his, to the space. His space. Get to the angles. Well, you know, I'm giving up five inches on reach. They had it as two. That was wrong. It was five. I, I can attest to this. I know. <laughs> I have fought more than probably everybody else. All right, I gave up five inches on the height. I gave up near 25 pounds in the weight. And this is because they, there is no space for me to, to, to compete at 165 or, 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 or 167 or, 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 or who knows. All I know is like I, am, I cannot cut the weight down to 55s anymore. And so here I am stuck in this place to fight this 25-year-old man that is already probably the most explosive and most fastest guy on the whole roster. So tell them right? what the game plan was. The, That's the, what they the game hear. plan 
<laughs> the I'll strategy. Look at you telling people to talk short. The, the strategy <laughs> is to get in there and do what I was planning on doing, getting in there and, and, and fighting with him, getting to the place where I could hit him. The guy was very extremely fast and was negating this by staying away. Like anytime I come in, it was like a rabbit running away. You know, you, you could get just close enough. This is not technically a fight. I had to adjust in there because, yes, I, I have kicks and punches. Power shots coming at me from a space where I cannot hit back. I, I was adjusting in there. And, of course, you know, to get the, the guy down, yeah, that would have been great. But I was reading the energy of his stamina. And was he, was the, were the bars coming down? No, they weren't. And it was going to take a lot of energy already being at triple disadvantage. You want to throw age in there, we'll make it quadruple. <laughs> All right? This is just is what it is. I'm fighting in my hometown. I got a lot of pressure on me as it is. Oh, let's not mention USADA. Let's not mention that shit that was happening the whole three months before. Let's not talk about that either. Were there actual USADA tests? Or what, what, what was the story but with USADA? But I'll let Coach explain the strategy on his part because he got me ready to go in there and perform as the athlete and the entertainer that I am to the best of my ability yeah to entertain the fans but to also continue to live another day to fight another day and in that fight towards the end of the fight yeah, I knew how, how things were going. I was struggling getting to my zone, getting to my place. But I also did know that I am a real amazing third-round fighter. And I, turn, I, I find inner strength and energy and endurance from the work and, and my experience. Yeah, this guy was throwing with everything he had. I was hoping and anticipating that he was going to blow a little and I was going to be there to close that distance and get in his face. Going back, if I could address the strategy, yes, I would have attacked with more of these leg kicks that I was landing. I would have came at his body more. But that was a calculation that I had to make in the heat of the moment with so much pressure on me. And so I'll let him speak on the strategy because he was the strategy. Well, the, the strategy is pretty simple. To, for Diego to be effective, he has to be able to get in to at least touch somebody's spine. If he's not close enough to touch somebody's spine, you cannot grapple with them accordingly. You cannot control them, and you definitely can't do enough damage within strikes. Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to get past another piece of length. So if you watched in the slow motion, he was doing that. He didn't get hit by the strike and was going around it. These are different forms of entry different forms of dealing and navigating that dangerous space to get him closer. This is what you're talking about, a rolling thunder, you know, whatever you want to call it. These are all different versions of this. It's not always just jab, jab, shoot. It's not the same shit you think of, but guess what? <clears throat> Things work differently than you think. <laughs> I didn't fucking ask him to do it, but he did it. And you guys think you understand about humans because you're over here faking them out, scaring them, and you wonder why the guy's giving you the most fight. Maybe you realize that the movement and the position that Diego was doing was mastering his position in a way he had to constantly readjust. Giving Diego more time in a space that has no time, expanding time so he has enough awareness to not get hit in those dangerous spaces and he can make the calculation of what is viably working in this moment and not. There's no way for me to then say, you know what, you definitely should go do this because I, from on the other side of the fucking cage with the worst seat in the house, you know, it's a billion dollar industry, it's interesting I don't have a fucking screen in front of me. Interesting. But now, oh, oh but, but mic me up and, and clown me out on, on what I'm saying. Well, Josh, so you, I mean, you make some <clears throat> fair points here. I mean, obviously, I, I did wonder if, you know, expecting the guy to fatigue meant something. I, I yeah. Clearly, you would expect that. And you make some points here. You know what, what everybody's concern is, is like, you know, it's clear that 
you guys have trust with each other, man. It's clear that you guys have a strong bond, a strong relationship. It's clear to me, anyway, from knowing you as long as I have, that this guy belongs in your life, that you believe that, right? I mean, that, I completely relate to that. I think what everybody's concern is, Joshua, do you have enough mixed martial arts knowledge you know, without bringing somebody else in. And, and, you know, the fact that you're a lone corner man, listen, there have been other people that have had lone corner It's not like you're the only – it's happened, right. right? Okay. So that's not bad. But I think that the, the question is, would it be wise? I mean, you're clearly – you're involved in tons of different industries. You're, you're, you've, you've done and accomplished a lot of things. But could even you be assisted by – and, Another coach, uh, you know, and, somebody else, somebody that does know striking as and, their specialty. And, and who says, who says I haven't gone out of my way and gotten counsel? How come you guys are not looking at my IG and noticing I went to Team fucking Lakai in the Philippines, talked to Mark Saggio, and was setting up a strike camp for this man? It's a great team. But no, 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 no. That would make Joshua Fabio look like an amazing coach. I want, I want any of your monkey asses to go to Baguio. Go to Baguio. Go ride the bus. You couldn't handle the adventure to go deal with what these men do, let alone understand what a real team is when they're actually fucking all from that space. When that man built them, there's a team there. It's not a Greg Jackson, I just came through these doors and he gets to take credit for them. So when I actually go to one of the most remote places in the world to take care of my fighter and you guys are questioning me, you guys need to do your fucking research. And on top of that, you need to recognize we have lots of footage with him with lots of professional fighters, including a whole bunch of jokers that were at the PI. But you might notice that the weight leaned on me. They might not want to speak up because they don't want no weight leaned on them. And now we're going to get into this astroturf and shit of the Internet and controlling analytics and making it so the verifiable footage of me and the jaw dropping action you don't get to see because there's. Joe Rogan's footage, the first thing, when you put my name in YouTube. So what are we missing? What, what are we not seeing that we need to see to have a better understanding? Because, I mean... Have you not seen the testimonial of the fighters from the, from the UFCPI? Sure. Okay, so why is that not being circulated and pushed and shown? Why is, why is there an article about Emil crying, but yet you beg to fucking train with us and then you thank me at the end? Why are you trying to jump on the notoriousness of the moment? Nobody need to hear your fucking name other than now I'm going to put out the footage of Diego handling your ass. And why didn't you say that? And why is nobody going after Emil since he just lost? What the fuck's going on, man? Anybody going after Emil's coach? Anybody going after his game plan? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're going after this little motherfucker. And I'm asking you why. So the truth is, in a stadium full of people, if you're trying to pick on the smallest guy in the room willing to handle the most amount of pressure... You're the biggest asshole in the stadium. So let me ask you one question. I know I wrote the article. I, I, you know, I'll be honest, whether you saw the byline or not, the article that came out afterwards about the first fight where you guys were working together, the, the lethal chokehold and what was presented to the commission. Right. I do have to ask you about that because that was concerning to people, I think, is that, you know, why would you – I mean, this is a dangerous sport, as we said. I mean, it's, it's, there are inherent dangers to it regardless. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Whether you were trying to be lethal or not, that is a real, very real risk that these fighters take. But why would you specialize or teach or want to convey a technique that you believe could potentially paralyze somebody or, or, you, or maybe you, kill you mean them? like doing a fucking backflip and stomping somebody's head? You mean like that? Well, like I said, there no, is no, no, definitely, there's no, definitely no, no. Hold on, risk. hold on, hold on. His fucking opponent's doing backflips on people's heads. Kiesa's choking people out. All types of stuff. Knee bars. There's compound fractures. There's all types of stupid shit. But a neck crank. Well, but hold on, hold on. A neck crank that puts somebody in the position of which they get to choose whether they hurt themselves or not. That's a, that's a bad one. Well, but hold on. But you were the one that, was, that, that pointed it out, right? I mean, you were the no. one that felt concerned enough about it. Is that, was that yes. I mean, yes. clearly right? Because my understanding was, is, is the way it was conveyed to me was yeah, yeah. you talked to the, well, I mean, the commission was talking to you about some other things and what was going on in the locker room. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and clarify the story. We know your article. I'll clarify the story. <laughs> okay, all right. We don't need to reiterate right, and waste right, the time. Right. But let's just get to the, the meat and potatoes because you want the truth. Yep. Here's the truth, man. You're already leaning on me three, four times before the, the real deal thing starts happening. This is in the background. All right. You know I'm the lone corner man. You pulled me out of there four times now. Well, you're starting to fuck with me now. That's just straight up. Straight up. You're fucking with me about uh, burning Palo Santo, but yet we can go to any church, any mosque, any temple, 
come on, man, what's going on? He's about ready to be in that danger. Are we not allowed to pray? Are we not allowed to do our own thing? Okay, so now tell me how the commission and everybody tells Kiesa what the fuck we're doing in our room. Well, well, hold on. So that's interesting. I don't know who told him. Now, to be clear, he wouldn't tell me who told him. He said, John, I know you and I like you, but I won't tell you who it is. Exactly. And that's the point is, why does this dude know what we're doing in our room? And we don't have any concern about what he's doing. So wouldn't that be suspicious? But that's not the angle of the article. OK, but let's just go a little farther. Let's just go a little farther. And let's just go. Why would Josh volunteer information like that? Because that's what you're really asking. Absolutely. Maybe it's because in the pre-fight warning referee coming in to give some fucking warning rules you know it's the normal bullshit of diego you know you've been here da 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 you know the hand down da 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 real quick real quick oh by the way you don't defend yourself two three seconds i gotta call it two three seconds d okay uh and this sa- is hold on. From- sound sound like you want to call it motherfucker that's what it sound like sound like you want to call it right now Okay, Playboy, now we're going to get into some legalities. You want to call it on my guy. My guy was just in the media week saying, kill, kill, kill. Well, now it's potentially dangerous. The liability's on you, ref. You need to know this because I could tell right now, I know a lot of things you motherfuckers don't know since you're tripping out that I got my finger up Diego's nose. Not Q-tips. So why, why are you lying in the articles? Why you guys ain't doing your fucking facts right? I got the video. Why didn't you ever talk to me? And maybe you understand why the article's coming out and the anonymous leaking motherfuckers are talking, even though I got them on tape. So here's the thing. There's only six of us. So I know who the fuck you are. You're not slick, man. You're not slick. How come you didn't talk this shit last year? How come it's coming out now? How come none of you are smart enough to see this, but yet, man, we're going to go make some money and some clicks and some comments on this shit. You all want to make money off these men, but again, I don't see any of you chucking 10% of your wages to their fucking pensions. This is the bullshit. You want to keep peddling it? Pedal it, man. But me and Diego, we don't eat shit. So to be clear, it was, it was almost like a reactive strategy or of like course, kind of a mental of course. game? Is that what of course, it's yeah. called it's called a preemptive strike, worried that we're about ready to put out the footage. That's all it is. That's all it is. To decharacterize me as a Loose cannon, a crazy person, except for now, now you motherfuckers got me hot. So now we'll show you the footage. We ain't going to put it out there for everybody to see, but I'll show you and we'll let you see the reaction of this man. If I'm so full of shit, if I'm such a bad human being, how come nobody at the UFC PI has ever stepped to me and said a word to me? I'm such a horrible person. Come on, man. Wake the fuck up. You guys just left the UFC, right? You guys yeah, had- we just left there. We just left Sean Shelby. <laughs> Talk- and if you think I'm talking like this now, I talk to him like that too. Don't think that I'm over here acting. I ain't putting up with nobody's shit. And I don't care who you think you are. I'm going to call you out. So this astroturfing thing that clearly you have to have money to do to put the slander on the amount of content, negative context on all of our posts so nobody sees our posts. That's fucking with the big term analytics and messing with the masses manipulated minds. Interesting. It's a billion dollar industry and how much money's going into betting. And wow, something just happened that the people betting didn't probably win. And wow, I'm in the fucking news. Come on, man. Come on. How, how'd the meeting go? How'd the meeting go? Sounds like you were worked up. It's over 2020 there. <laughs> and this be some 2020 shit. So if you still back in 1995, if you back there and, and you ain't upgraded yet, you ain't got your upgrade, like, things are happening different nowadays. And the masses and the people need to have an understanding for this. If Do you think it, it's the UFC that's out to? I don't know at this point. At this point, our lawyers will be getting back to us with the end of our cyber investigation. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't care at this point the specifics. I, I'm... I'm not dumb. Clearly, the billion dollar industry is not dumb. They're going to distance themselves from connected legality and liability as nobody's talking about the ref not doing their job correctly in this thing, asking Diego something he should not be asking because it is against the laws and rules. But as I talk to Sean Shelby, our hands are clean. That's not us. That's not us. That's that's them. That's them. Yeah, but you're making money off of this thing, ain't you? 
So you're not going to police the governing body policing this thing of which is creating viable space to create corruption. Well, that's an entirely different discussion with the officials, man. I'm obviously judging, refereeing, right, right, officiating. Right, right, that, right, right. That but but at this point, what are we talking about? You just told me about the Kiesa fight. I'm telling you, the refs are coming in and then going and telling Kiesa what we're about to do. Sound a little fucked up there. And now we have footage of the fight that UFC put out, made sure to make sure that that footage of Diego being asked the question, so his legacy and everything's put in the slander. He's a chicken and a quitter for being aware enough to make the best decision of his life in this circumstance, but to the fans and to his legacy to the younger generation, he's not a warrior no more. He's a Ah. quitter, quitter, quitter. And here's my point, sir, is you know the truth. We know the truth. Anybody real knows the truth. That's why I suggest you go look at our comments and recognize and go click into how many of these fake profiles. All this shit is so fake, it's ridiculous. And when Ariel Awani has been astroturfed and yet you're gonna participate in the astroturfing of me, you're a motherfucker. That's real, man. Well, we'll, uh, we'll stay tuned to hear how the investigation goes. Let's talk about the meeting at the UFC. I mean, we're, we're looking at the future. How, how did the meeting go? What were you guys? Hoping to accomplish in the meeting, what 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 did you get accomplished? How how did it go? What what, what kind of news do we got for the future career, of Diego Sanchez? Um, you know, that's a great question, and it, that's a private meeting, so I'll uh, I'll keep it very limited. To I'm moving forward. I am healthy, and I'm excited to to do what I do. I do this very passionately. I do love it. I'm not truly not fighting for only money and for oh my retirement no i i love being this person and having this voice to speak right now and have my fans listen just know that i am healthy and my spirit is strong and i'm not going anywhere i'm holding on let me ask you a question diego going forward are you open to evaluating Who's in your camp? Who works with you? That sort of thing. Or should should the world know right now, guys? I made oh, my decision. Oh, this is my oh, guy. Oh, Just shut up and deal with it. This is how I'm. This is how I'm going. Yes, yes, yes. I could I could address that very easily. Joshua is my brother, my my mentor, my guide, my manager, my my trainer, and this has been the most disrespectful that my fans and the masses of the MMA community have addressed me in my career. Just throwing all the hits and all the traumas that I took in the 16 years in the UFC, all this trauma that I took, I paid the price for the experience to make my own decisions in what is best for me going forward. I have always been different than everybody else. And maybe that's why I've lasted so long. All right? I continue to thrive in a special, unique, unorthodox approach that has led me to Joshua. And what he's done for me outside of mixed martial arts is amazing and you really should look into it and 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 become aware of that yeah yeah i'm i'm sitting here in front of you my face is not i don't look like i'm going anywhere i'm speaking healthy and this is more than a fighting career because diego sanchez the ufc fighter the identity that's been done and dead I am Diego Sanchez, the human being now. (laughs) And so now that I step into this part of my purpose in life, understand that I'm making these decisions. I'm thinking about this. I'm putting my heart, my mind, my daughter, and my mother, and my father, the three people that I have to take care of. I'm doing everything in the best of my ability, in the best way that I can, for my future and that includes standing up to the bullies who were taking advantage of me and not treating me correctly this is just what it is 
I know that a lot of people around the world are suffering from these same things, whether it be at their job or whether it be on the playground. And they're not saying, they're not speaking up, they don't have the courage. I want people to see me and, and see something different, a new generation, a new era of people believing in themselves and not just listening to what the comments say. And on that subject, I, I know where everybody's a little lost. You now have to clarify on camera the martial art experience enhancement that you've had. Have you or have you not increased your MMA and fight IQ? Like, you got to explain that part it's, it's, because because they don't think I have any value there. No, and no, you talking uh, about the other side of your life, I'm uh, just telling you, it, excuse it, them. So Under, tell them un understand. what they need to know. Understand first and foremost, the, the first time that we put hands on each other and started going at 80%, 85%, Okay, the first time on the concrete in a random CrossFit gym that I wasn't supposed to be in, I got trapped, man. No, after he took my back, little, little, little snaky guy takes my back. Okay, no, no, this ain't going to happen. I'm a scrambler. I'm bigger, faster. I'm, I, I'm Diego Sanchez, the ultimate fighter. All right? He took my back. And he, right. hold on, and he tried to switch and slam my face into the concrete. Yeah, that, that was the dickhead Diego, not the one sitting in front of the camera right now. Obviously, it didn't happen. That guy died. He's gone. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> my arm got trapped, and I could have easily been snapped, okay? It was trapped because it was snapped in a way where I could have just easily broke my own arm if, if, if I wasn't aware of, oh, shit, that's a checkmate. And so this is where the, the lessons began. And it has gone so much more forward into my evolution as, as a true fighter. And people, I'm not done. And you will get the performance that you're waiting for. With a fair fight with somebody his same actual size. That's when you'll be able to see the effects of this training. That's the truth. Now, real quick, tell them about your experience in the Middle East training with somebody that just took the the bjj worlds the bjj europe tell them about sammy tell them about these other fighters that you've trained with has any person said to you that joker doesn't know what he's doing have have i slipped have i fallen has anybody checked me physically the, the truth of the truth of it is is like going past martial arts even just movement okay I have witnessed millions of movements over one year. No, no mistakes. All right, that right there, throw your mind, throw your mind in a loop. But it's the truth. All right, it is what it is. And like, the, no, hold on. He's seen me walk around the Holy Land barefoot and not take a slip. Like, understand a year. How many times have you tripped, fell, busted your ass, regular shit? Come mess with me in my world and see if bottom you can line help. is bottom line is this. Anybody want to feel it? Like we're here. Anybody want to feel it and question? It? I don't see the, nobody the, lining the, the up. People, the people out there that are leaving these comments and leaving this stain to uh, to uh, for people to breed into this thought of not believing it, that I could make decisions for myself because of oh, the CTE. Fuck, man. Okay. And, and we might remember. notice whoa, the whoa, CTE whoa, whoa, comments whoa, 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 fuck, are coming CTE. from that astroturfing. My memory. It's just, no, this is not the issue. I know I have trained with the more of the best in the world than anyone else. Like, is it not anybody taking that into account? Like, I'm the guy, like whether it's my two years I did in Cali, whether it's all my time in Las Vegas, whether it's all the time at the greatest Jackson Wink room where guys come in and go out. This is the truth. I know. I know. And w like, we, like I said, sign us up for a seminar. We'll come. We'll come show you. And um, we'll document too. Like we document everything. And, and everybody wonders why I have to document everything. It's because of the liars. It's because of the doubting Thomases and the people that want to take space in the light of which it's not their space. And um, in, in, and in this note, in this note, 
Uh, we did an interview yesterday with Schmo, and sh you know, I have this testimonial. I think their their thing got a little too long, and they had to cut it. I would like you, sir, with your beautiful reading voice, to read this testimonial from a federal marshal, U.S. federal marshal, here in New Mexico, in America, in the real Breaking Bad where real shit happens, please, sir, let them know that Mr. Diego has not been bamboozled. CTE, guys. This, this whole, it's pretty long. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> like, like, like trying to describe something you have never seen, it might take more words than you want to say. I like it. He said, I had an idea of what Josh was about when I first saw him give a demonstration. He was completely effortless at controlling and experienced MMA fighters. Like all gimmicky tricks, I was very skeptical. I could not, however, get over how smooth and effortless he was. He called our MMA workout silly. What? I work so hard on MMA. I want to survive on the streets as a police officer. I realized quickly that his intent was not to ridicule but to enlighten. Months later, I met Josh for our first training session with mixed expectations. After all, I have 10 years on this job and have trained in MMA for five years. I take self-defense and tactical training way more seriously than most of my colleagues. When I got home, I was speechless. I could not explain to my family how Josh captures the human body and human nature and uses it to his advantage. It goes on from there, but I'll post the full thing if you want. We'll put it online so people yeah, can read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you should post the full I thing, will. but it's also part of the people don't want to read it and they want to watch you say it. <laughs> and so now I'm going to have you read another one from another perspective because that's, hold on, hold on. That, that's on the talk of martial arts and combatives and this and that. Let's now go into some regular people, some real things. This is a woman who's a retired DOD. Her husband is retired colonel of the United States Air Force. Let's hear their opinion. By the way, the other gentleman's name was J.D. Vaughn, right? That, yep. that was the name. This yep. is from a Brenda Harmison. This testimonial is for Josh Fabia from Tim and Brenda Harmison. We have been working with Josh for a little over three years, and our physical and spiritual health are now very balanced. When Josh first came into our lives, I had a sh an old shoulder injury, and my husband had back pain. Josh quickly assessed our issues and began a program that in a short time corrected those injuries for us both. Since that time, he has worked on keeping us physically able to live our lives in good health and provided spiritual support for life's ups and downs. We are much, excuse me, we are much able... We're more able now to not only avoid the ravages of age and have a better balanced bodies and minds. Additionally, after working with Josh for only a few months, I was able to stop taking blood pressure medication as my blood pressure stabilized. There's more there as well. I can, I can post the rest of that one too. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. But, but here's my point is don't you think maybe it's a little more disrespectful for the people to be running the same narrative as saying that, and they're just believers. This guy's a snake oil salesman. Do you see now how disrespectful it really is to all of these thousands of people that have worked with me around the world? Again, are you saying that government and law enforcement don't know how to vet somebody, but the piece of paper I fill out for fucking being a cornerman does? Well, no, I don't think. And like, I, this listen. is what I mean is this is the bullshit of no, none of you guys have been vetted. I don't, I don't want to go into this on you guys, but if we flip the script and I interview you, trust me, this shit will go sideways. So that's where I'm saying is slow it down, start to recognize, damn, man, I'm, it's hard to even recognize he had but, got hit yesterday. But Josh, would it be There's clear? a lot of stuff to be said nice, and nobody's saying any of that. But Josh, would it be clear? Nobody, I don't think, in this space anyway, in MMA space, is mm -hmm. questioning all those things that you've accomplished outside of the sport. Because you're right, we're not educated on them and, and wouldn't even pretend to be. I think the questions have been, and I think you've answered them today, and I appreciate that, have been about inside the sport. And Diego, I mean, Diego, as you realize, beloved figure of the sport, man, has dedicated his life, is, is one, I mean, a future Hall of Famer, Absolutely. already a Hall of Famer, right, but right. I think he'll be a Hall of Famer just in his fighting career. And I think that's what everybody's concerned Absolutely. about is, hey, man, this guy, like I said from the beginning, yeah, yeah. I believe, knowing, knowing yeah, yeah. Diego the way I do, I believe that as, as a spiritual guide and, you know, as I, I believe you have a place in his life. I think the concern from everybody's point of view was, are we sending Diego out into a fight ill-prepared or ill-equipped to compete at the very highest level of the sport in what is essentially hand-to-hand -hand combat? That's what everybody's no, concerned about. No, no, about. absolutely. And has he gotten hurt? Has it, see, there's no real concern that's part of the narrative being spilt when Joe Rogan's putting it. I don't know who he's got. I don't know. I don't know this guy. I didn't know you knew all the fucking coaches. I didn't know you know everything that's going on, really. Like, you're not his friend. You don't know nothing, man. You don't know anything. You didn't call anybody. You didn't ask. You didn't actually have a conversation. So then saying all this has set the tempo for everybody to repeat it since we're in a copycat culture and such a quick movement of content. So again, I left everybody enough time to come contact me. I gave you guys a year, all you media venues. 
None of you motherfuckers contacted me. I had to ultimately contact you in the light of this scandal and say, hey, can I please have a voice since clearly nobody's going to allow me to have it and they're going to keep gaslighting me, steamrolling me and ambushing me for their content for the other side of this astroturfing. So in, in reality, let's just get back to the facts. I am coming from the outside completely. I never asked to be here. I never said I'm in your market. I want to get a MMA team. I'm not out here competing against you and disrespecting you coaches. I'm just doing something that is different. And the point is, is everybody's little insecurities might be the real problem here. Might be the real problem of why can nobody shed light on damn, man, that's kind of incredible. This complete outsider is able to stand in with this veteran, hasn't really publicly disappointed other than the narrative being written. There is no complaints here. And if you talk to the people close to this man, which are his mother, his father, and his daughter, talk to them and ask them what they think of me. Ask them. I'll tell you, my mom. I love that, Joshua. I don't have to worry about you no more, son. I don't have to worry about all these, all these mooches and, and snakes and sharks coming after you. I know Joshua is going to protect you. So, again, let's just go back into this credential world. You come from a world where you lay down your respect because of a piece of paper because of a past accomplishment that the person is riding on a horse into your fucking space. And you've been conditioned to do this and this is why you chase pieces of paper. I'm in a different world and I do not endorse killing trees to endorse yourself. I believe at moment for moment, you need to earn respect. Nobody given me the chance to earn it and now you've been disrespectful. Now you're wondering why I'm speaking the way I'm speaking. When everywhere I go in the world, I don't use name dropping. I don't use pieces of paper. I actually go prove it to the people. And if you allow me to prove it, as I'm already here on this space and platform, I've already proven it. Again, history has already been made. You just might not want to accept it and you're trying to rewrite it. So the conqueror ends up looking like they conquered something. You cannot hurt me. I'm not in your world. I will go on helping people the rest of my life. MMA is not my feeder system. So I'm not at the mercy here. And this is why I have freedom to say the things that need to be said. Clearly. Well, listen, I mean, the bottom line is Diego's happy where he's at. Diego's happy with the relationship. And obviously that means a lot. And I, I guess uh, you'll just get more and more chances to answer those questions every time you get, get out there. I mean, there are, there are continued fights ahead for Diego Sanchez, yeah. correct? Oh, there is. There yeah. is. And um, where those fights take place uh, we you know we don't know maybe the octagon it may be um the the coffee table <laughs> <laughs> well not and, here and, not here i'm good I, i'll tap now <laughs> and and here and here's the truth gentlemen real fighters fight for real things ask yourself what are you really fighting for and those of you that have been guided conditioned and bred into this world of sport violence fighter ask yourself why do you really want to be a fighter ask yourself that question truly and you might come to a real answer that you might want to keep to yourself well listen there's a there's going to be controversy surrounding you going forward i know that but uh, i do appreciate you guys both coming in and, and committing some time today and answering my questions i i really do appreciate it Absolutely. and uh, it's always a pleasure guys thank you john appreciate it yeah thank you for the time the space and the energy we appreciate you more than you know. Like I said, in a world of silencing others, it is the heroes that give us voice.